Hey folks, it's Lev. Welcome back to another video. For those of you who are new and you're seeing pronouns, I am 19 weeks on testosterone. My voice is slowly getting deeper. It gets, it's just progressive deepening and I'm living for it. And you may have noticed that the camera quality is different. It's because I'm using a different phone now. A better phone with better camera. So that's why the camera quality is different from all my previous videos. Today, I wanted to talk about social media, social media usage and looking after our brain and basically being aware of what we feed it. Um, so uh, last year during lockdown, I posted on Instagram compulsively, like um, a lot. And what I've come to realize before I mean, before I decided to permanently delete my account that has like a two, over 200 posts that I, I've had for over two years, um, I lost my train of thought. One second. What I come to realize is that I was basically addicted to posting and it wasn't, I didn't really do like random posts of just a picture of me. Um, without a proper caption. I usually draft very long posts about something and then I post it with a picture. But even if my post had meaning to it, I still felt like pretty, pretty shitty staying on it because I realized that I was relying on validation from other people. So I basically posted more for validation than to posting to actually make an impact with what I'm trying to say. Something else I subconsciously did, which made me feel worse, is compare the number of likes, not to other people's posts, but compare the number of likes from one of my posts to another one of my posts. And if a post didn't perform well in terms of people double tapping the screen for a like, um, I just felt worse um, and if it did get more likes, which is literally someone touching a screen twice uh, or pressing the heart button, um, I felt happier with my post. I felt more encouraged to keep posting and then uh, if it got less likes, then I would just, oh, maybe no one really cares about this sort of mindset. I went down that spiral, okay. If people don't like this post, then it's probably pretty shitty. And then, you know, why did I even try? It just goes down a rabbit hole. It's just like one thought leads to another, leads to another, leads to another. And before I know it, I'm in a deep, dark rabbit hole and I have no way of getting out back to the top again. Um, I should have also mentioned that my Instagram was private, so it wasn't on public. I only had like 40 something followers, which yeah, that that didn't bother me, but the number of likes for each post did. So it was a public, a private account, yet it still basically messed with my head. Um, and I reached a point where I decided I don't want to live like this anymore. Like I don't want to live um, and get short-term fulfillment from writing posts and have people give me validation by liking the post, which is someone touching a screen. Like I literally thought of it like that and I'm like, why am I giving so much damn meaning and giving so much power to... Um, people touching a screen for a like like that is just not how I want to live my life like that's if I think about it it's meaningless it's literally someone touching a screen I don't want people touching a screen on their device to essentially rule my life and my mental health and that's why I decided to delete Instagram I'm like um deactivating for me was not enough I had to take a bigger step which is to permanently delete my account and I did that in January of this year. And it's been four months since I deleted my Instagram. And I absolutely do not regret that decision at all. Um, another thing that also really messed with me is if my friends didn't like the posts, the thought 
then becomes they don't like me, they don't care about me, which is complete garbage. Like, it doesn't mean anything. But, like, when I was stuck in that loop, it was really hard to separate that, the two things. Like, my friends like my post and they care about me in real life. But then, like, I, it was hard. It was hard to separate it. And that's also something that really messed me up. And that's why I also decided to delete Instagram because I don't want to live. I wanted to rewire my brain and change the way I saw things. And the only way I was to achieve that is to get off Instagram, completely delete my account, close the chapter and move on. It's actually like unbelievable how one thing can just lead to another and it just spiral down. It's like, okay, I post it. They don't like my posts. They don't care about me. Maybe I'm not good enough. It just goes down like that. Like it's just a spiral. One thought leads to another. And this can, this dragged on for months for me. Like, um, I would feel happy some days and then out of nowhere, I would just feel shit. And, uh, one of the things that led to that was this spiral of negative, unhelpful thoughts that were not true, which were reinforced by social media validation or lack of validation. It just fed the cycle. Staying on Instagram fed the cycle. The cycle of sadness, um, seeing myself as less than, it just perpetuated the damn thing. And I'm just like, I'm sick of this. I don't want this anymore. No, I don't want this anymore. At first, it was really hard. Um, deleting it like that was really hard for me like I had become um I guess emotionally addicted to this cycle and it was um hard to break out of it it's just like being addicted to anything really it's just you're so used to it like I was so used to it even though I knew it was not good for me and I knew that it was destroying my mental health and I knew that it was negative I I'd, like negatively impacting the other domains of my life. I knew all of this logically, but emotionally I was so hooked up. I was so hooked in this cycle and changing it was a difficult decision. The withdrawal really started to hit me. I'm like, and it just felt like I was lacking something in my life and I was very out of balance because that was something I was used to for so long. And then suddenly I just stripped it away from myself and am expected to, I guess, cope with it, without it, which is, there, there is an adaptation period. And, but I knew that this short-term pain and persevering through this difficult time will lead to benefits and positive outcomes in the long run. And four months on, I can definitely say I see a lot of benefits to this, which I will talk about now. I forgot to mention before the benefits. Um, every time I went on Instagram and I saw people's stories and posts, I just felt shit. Like I, I just felt lonely and the FOMO kicked in subconsciously. I didn't like to admit it, but that really messed with me as well. The FOMO, and I know seeing other people's lives, like it's like it seems so much better than mine, and I compared my. Uh, I guess difficult days and dark times to the highlights of people's lives and I, that's something that sh social media does like any social media we're comparing our um, tough times with people's highlight reels which is unrealistic but I think all of us do it subconsciously and that's also why I wanted to delay Instagram because I wanted to break out of the cycle and I didn't want to keep doing that to myself. The first benefit I got out of deleting Instagram permanently and staying off social media in general is I enjoy the present moment more. I'm more present in events and I'm not like scrambling to take photos, capture video, you know, think of a, a caption. I don't scramble to do that or... and. And I'm just living in the moment for myself, predominantly myself, and not living in the moment for the sake of posting on social media. Linking to that, I don't get distracted as easily trying to think of a post. Like, in the present moment, I'm, I'm not distracted 
and I can fully pay attention, which then makes the ex the experience I'm in um, more meaningful and memorable because i actually paying attention to it, being fully present, not thinking about what am I supposed to say on social media. It just um, makes the experience more rich, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes it more rich. Thinking to that, I have much more mental and emotional capacity to do for like uh go after the meaningful things in life the ones that give me long-term fulfillment not short-term highs that die down very quickly and it's just it's just like empty carbs i've heard this analogy it's like consuming empty carbs it may like be good and takes taste good in the moment and give you some satisfaction but after you've finish it the, the, the food or drink that's unhealthy that doesn't really give you much nutrition it, you enjoy in the moment but then after you finish it's just like oh it's gone like it's yeah me too that includes me as well um some some examples of meaningful things in my life rather than short-term highs is like making a short film writing vlogs making music writing songs for friends, um, continuing to create an impact and on the LGBTQ plus space and mental health, doing um, advocacy, trans and gender diverse advocacy. These are the types of things, boxing, these are the types of things that give me long-term fulfillment. And ever since doing Dealing Instagram, I have much, I have a lot more mental space for these things because I'm not preoccupied with, again, thinking of something to write and taking pictures for the sake of posting on Instagram. The third thing I can think of is I'm more confident in being myself and not so much relying on the validation of other people to make me feel good about myself, basically. Like, I can stand on my own two feet and feel good about myself without people validating me through likes um that whole that that's completely disconnected the thought of like my self-worth and my value in what i have to say and who i am as a person is not dictated by the number of likes i get on social media or how much attention my posts gets that that's disconnected and i'm staying on my own two feet um, also, like, rewired my brain to not be so hooked on the emotional cycle of that whole thing. I think overall, I'm just a lot more happy and I feel like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. I feel a lot more happy. Weight lifted off my shoulders. I feel like I'm living life more just from deleting Instagram like it's amazing how changing one thing in our lives or in my case changing one thing in my life has basically again I say this in every video but every domain of my life is linked in a way it is linked somehow and just changing this one aspect of my life has changed all other aspects of my life in positive ways last month I made one of my other private Instagram accounts that I just kept for myself um, public and started posting again and it the, the results of are completely different in terms of how I see things and how I emotionally respond to things like I um the few months that I was completely off Instagram and posting it gave me time to detach from from this cycle of emotional addiction that is not healthy and changing my thoughts about the whole I'm not good enough maybe this is has no value changing all of that that's all out the window now and when I go on social media Instagram now and post things and see the number of likes it has no effect over me like it I'm just indifferent I'm just like cool that's it like it doesn't make me happy nor does it mess with my head and drag me down and that's all because I stayed off social media to give myself time to build a new path, pave a new pathway, basically. 
in terms of content in general, I have recently, past few months, I've been a lot more intentional with the content I choose to consume on social media, any media really. I don't really go on social media that much unless I need to post something. Um, otherwise, I don't go on it because I've it's just so boring. Even Facebook, I've tried it. Like, I scroll for like one minute and I'm just like, why am I here? Like, I, I, I do this, uh, I guess, mini experiment repeatedly where I go on Facebook maybe once a week or I don't know, once every two weeks. Um, and I see whether it's it gives me that fulfillment. And I, I scroll, I'm just like, I don't care about any of this. Like, why am I here? So that's why I'm like, I stay off social media because it's just, it doesn't give me any sort of fulfillment or meaning or add any value to my life. Um, yeah, same with Instagram now. I don't really go on it unless I need to like message someone or post something. Otherwise, I don't go on it. And I'm very intentional with how I use it. So every before I go on social media, I'm like, are you going to use this with intention? What are you intending to do on social media? And yeah, I ask myself questions before I go on. I don't, and that, that helps break, that helps with the compulsiveness thing as well. It also reinforces the new pathway I paved, the new path I've paved. Um, using it with intention, asking myself questions. It really reinforces the path I've paved. I'm also aware of like the content I consume in general, including YouTube. So I found that I, when I was on social media, I was really overloaded with info, um, a lot of irrelevant info. I was just overloaded. My poor brain couldn't cope. And I just kept on torturing it by like giving it more irrelevant content to process. And I experienced like brain fog and those sorts of things like brain fog. I'm just overwhelmed. Um, there seems to be no more room in my brain to be able to do much more. And it's because like I keep bombarding myself with content and stimulation and my poor brain doesn't have basically, it doesn't even get time to pause and take a breather. That's how I imagine it. It's just constant simulation, YouTube, TV, music everything just bombarding me and I come to realize that I don't care um about the random content I watch on YouTube like I don't care about it it doesn't again it doesn't really add meaning to my life I'm not saying I don't watch videos just for fun like fun videos I do that sometimes but now I'm much more intentional with what I watch and I am very clear in my head whether this is um, just watching so you can relax and basically not have to think too hard or watch stuff that allows you to grow and learn and content that requires you to, requires me to use more brain energy to process info and think on a deeper level. Like, for example, I have been recently listening to a lot of Brene Brown's podcasts. <laughs> Um, the episodes from Unlocking Us. Um, I'm currently listening to an episode about understanding emotions and um, how to manage it and what it means. Like just a whole talk about emotions, human emotions. And that is the type, type of deep content that I go after now. More long form content, not like random things on YouTube. No. When I'm driving in the car, I don't turn on my radio anymore. I, I have silence, complete silence. Even if the trip is like an hour and a half, I leave it, my, my radio. I leave the radio on silent. I listen to absolutely nothing. And the only thing I hear is the sound of traffic around me. I have all my windows up as well. So it blocks out all the sound. It's just, it's just nice time for me to be with myself, with my thoughts and enjoy the silence and actually give myself room to think about things rather than again being bombarded with info and my brain is trying to hold info and I don't really think about things that's not how I want to live my life I just yeah I've been reducing a lot of the amount of simulation coming in where possible 
so that when I do decide to consume content, I have capacity for it and actually pay attention to it fully and not half ass listen or watch something and then completely forget what the what is being said because my brain's already overloaded. So yeah. Um a few closing thoughts. Social media is not a bad thing. Like this technology is incredible in being able to connect with others, share a message, advocate, be vulnerable with the world in 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 the hopes of helping others. There are a lot of good things about the existence of social media. Um, it's more about what's more important to me is how do I use social media? It's not saying, okay, social media is bad. It is the enemy. Uh, to wipe it off the face of the earth. No, it's more about how am I using social media? Am I using with intention? That's the important thing. What is the intent behind me going on social media? That's the important thing. The intention of, of use of social media. Not social media itself. And just be mindful of what um, what your brain is bombarded with on a daily basis. What kind of content or anything really that you are exposed to. And you know, you might, if you're feeling too overwhelmed. And that your brain is just at max capacity. Maybe it's important to take... Um, breaks from it basically have periods of silence throughout your day to let your brain pause and breathe and um, process things yeah thanks for watching folks um, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one